the stream will end shortly unless you restart it in your streaming software. Hmm, that's interesting. Okay, so I don't know what's going on and why it should be doing that. Um, yeah, I don't know. So, but anyway, hello. And let's hope it's not... Uh, I'm going to record it on my end anyway. So hello, everybody. Um, welcome to live stream number 16. And, and I uh, hope you enjoyed the last stream that I did. Um, what was it? I was um, studying Samuel Pepler, wasn't I? The Scottish colorist. And I was on more familiar territory there. So today, uh, I've kind of um, suggested that I uh, have a look at Chagall, Marc Chagall. Uh, the French, Russian, well, mostly Russian, wasn't he? Uh, Belarusian, in fact, um, uh, painter uh, who uh, led a kind of hard life and you know, fled, fled Russia, and then he then he had to flee uh, France uh, as the Nazis encroached in the 30s, and he fled to um, America. And uh, there we go. Ah, listen. Ah, Miles, how are you doing? Good to see you. Uh, I don't know what happened, whether you joined the last, uh, uh, I, I tried five minutes ago to, to launch this and uh, it, it suddenly just, just cut, uh, it, it ended the stream um, I don't know, of, of its own accord. So would you let me know in the comments um, what it sounds like? Is it clearer and uh, is it not buffering too much or anything like that? Uh, right. Miles, you say you're looking forward to this. I don't know how much you'll be looking forward to it once I start. The thing uh, I, I find about Chagall is I don't think I can paint uh, in that it's almost childlike way that uh, he paints because I've spent too long sort of uh, trying to get accuracy. It's hard to uh, it's hard to sort of de uh, de escalate the. Uh, uh, the the accuracy and I find find that that sort of being able to draw well is kind of like a hindrance almost. Uh, all right, okay, so it's all it's all good. Thank you for for the comment. Yeah, so it can be a, a bit of a hindrance to to draw well sometimes, and uh, um, and it's not necessarily always a good thing. So uh, I, I'm going to have a go. The thing I, I thought about uh, Chagall's work is it's the emotional content. Uh, he obviously was sort of you know, a kind of a, an emotional and a, a loving man. I mean, I hope I'm not wrong. You often find out that your heroes sort of have got definite feet of clay, don't they? But, uh, you know, he seems to have been a, a, a kind of a, a, an emotional man, a kind of a, you know, a good, good kind of person. And, it, and it's kind of touching that, that, that most of his work sort of centers around his childhood and where he's from and, uh, <clears throat> you know, his relationship with his wife and, uh, and his culture. And things like that. So, uh, and the th one thing I didn't know is that uh, uh, his, his his Jewishness and sort of uh, and his recording of sort of life in in uh, in the Russian Empire, you know, and the and the, um, the cultural sort of aspects and like the music and the and the Yiddish uh, culture, you know, and and that it was the the makers of the film uh, Fiddler on the Roof. Um, referred to one of his paintings in the actual title because it's Chagall that painted this uh, violinist on a, on a roof. Uh, and in fact, he's, he's floating above the roof. This the kind of magical sort of uh, way Chagall has of representing uh, things. So it, it's, it's quite, uh, quite interesting and, and it kind of makes me think, oh, can I do that? But I was thinking of, of uh, some of my own, well, well one particular um, painting that I did, which was a, a in you know Chagall-esque uh, because he I, I painted I painted myself and my wife sitting in the garden it was something we both love to do is is, uh, is gardening and uh, you know we're sitting there and it is a kind of a fantasy I, I painted myself without referencing any pictures or anything I just painted myself the way I thought that I looked <clears throat> and I painted uh, uh, my wife as well just the way she is in my head and and the way she was, uh, the way she dressed at one particular moment uh, uh, in our relationship, you know, sort of, uh, she had this particular sort of, uh, summer dress that I, I kind of always thought looked great on her, and 
and uh, I painted my cat there, sort of, and the things that I love. My, my children are represented by um, by flowers, that kind of thing. And, uh, I don't think it's quite as magical uh, in its thinking as uh, uh, Chagall, but I, th I think it was some way of the way uh, there, and that's what the way I'm going to sort of think uh, today. So I'm going to sort of uh, I'm going to paint my life in as close to Chagall uh, a manner as, uh, as I can. I don't think I'll get there, to be honest, uh, uh, but you, um, it's up to you whether you think I hit the mark or not. Uh, so uh, I'll have a go. What else was I going to say about it? <clears throat> yeah, the other thing was, technically, <clears throat> he seems to have put the paint on <clears throat> reasonably thinly, <clears throat> and um, maybe he didn't even uh, uh, put on a, a, a background wash. I've put a background wash on, uh, and I'll show you in a moment uh, if I just blue. Uh, but uh, just to just to go on uh, and show you here. Look, here's some of uh, Chagall's work, just ones that I picked out, um, and so this one, which which is is it's kind of a, like for, for me, it's a completely different way of painting than I would do. I wouldn't even know where to begin on a on a. Uh, painting like that. And look at the way he he, uh, he signed it directly in the middle of the, at the bottom of the painting, in that rooster I think it is that uh, he has there. Roosters seem to uh, to be uh, a, a thing in his paintings. Here is another one. His compositions are just not classical compositions, are they? Look at the way things are just cropped off. There's mother and baby uh, down at the bottom. Uh, the, I think it's a goat, isn't it, with his head just poking in from the top. There are lots of flying people and uh, animals. Uh, let's have a look. Here, there's a romantic one, and then uh, was it an angel flying towards them with flowers, I think. It's not that easy to see. Uh, flowers uh, occur a lot in his work, and, um, and his home place, uh, down the bottom there, I think that's probably representation of the village where he was from. I can't remember what it's called, Vitelsk or something. This is the one that, that sort of uh, reminded me of the painting that I did myself. So, And I'm going to sort of work off that. Although I'm not going to come back and reference this uh, at all. I'm going to reference in my head the painting that I did before and, and just attempt to make it Chagall-esque. Okay, so let me have a look. Instead of wittering on uh, like mad here. Uh, this couple of people in so you know do identify yourselves miles you already I can see that you're there um, what was the best way for me to do this okay so you see my arm leaning on the palette there that's quite what is actually this is that I just don't want to have that hot spot on me no it's this one isn't it hang on Is it? Yeah, I think it is. Let me just push that down a wee bit. Or is that the one? No. I don't know where that, that hot spot is coming from. No, it's not that one. Hmm. Oh, I, I know. I tell, tell you what. There's a, I spilt some. No, no, that's not it either. I'll try and keep away from that hot spot anyway. Right, so I need to do a drawing first, don't I? So let me do a drawing. Um, so, and he, he, he just didn't draw accurately. So I'm gonna grab some, oh, I'd better show you the, the palette, hadn't I? Let's uh, have a look at that first. Um, I was researching uh, Chagall's palette and I haven't got every color that uh, he has, titanium white. Uh, he had three yellows on the palette that I researched. There's a palette in the Smithsonian, I think. Uh, so there's uh, cadmium yellow pale hue, cadmium orange, I think. Oh, that's an old one, isn't it? Cadmium orange, yeah, cadmium orange, there you go. Cadmium red, medium hue, I think. Alizarin crimson. He used a lot of blues. I'm, I've only got two. Cobalt blue. He used a lot of cobalt blue and Prussian blue. And I seldom use Prussian blue. I mean, it's an extremely intense uh, colour. Like, like um, Pathalo blue, it gets everywhere. 
and I've got viridian green as well so let's see what we can do with that and I've got my brushes and my rag all right so I'm going to grab a bit of blue there and I'm going to put in uh, a representation of uh, my wife first <laughs> so what I I kind of imagine her to be like and and she can crop off the uh, I'm not referencing anything uh, to this so and I want there and I want to have her hands folded on her lap like that and we've got uh, a table here uh, and I want my own garden in in this so uh, let's have a look at here first we can put in some vegetation maybe there's a like the Chagall painting I'm going to have a little book on the table and maybe we both love uh, to have our coffee in the morning so I'm going to put in the coffee happy time sort of uh, just drinking coffee oh I should change it shouldn't I sorry I beg your pardon you'll think I'm mad so I'm concentrating on the painting and not on the computer I'm sure some of you said that okay so here we go um, her eyes there dress there and she's quite tall my wife you know so she's as tall as I am anyway so so the drawing can be like that and her hair often comes around there like that um, and I want my studio in here. And the thing about Chicago is that it didn't matter. The, the things were all sort of uh, different sizes and uh, odd, odd shapes. Uh, let's put some. And I'm going to be painting. in the garden and I want my cat I'm not going to do a rooster I'm not Chagall so uh, um, I'm going to put in my my cat which was in the the painting that I did Then my cat can go in there like that, and there's the tail around there. And uh, that can come across there. There's a door, window, window. That's what my studio looks like. And there I'll put the palette in and the brush I might do a, a, a painting on my easel there and there's my easel up there like that and flowers 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 big huge flowers put it in a, a vase have the vase cropping off awkwardly and let's uh, cross our hands there probably he seemed to have worked so quickly as well so uh, let's um, I'm going to put 
Every, everything seems to be awkward in, in, in his paintings. So awkwardly placed. And there like that. Dress. Now, I'm going to start out with those flowers just to get a bit of um, bit of colour in there. Let's put that out there. There's more than a nod to a particular Chagall painting here, obviously. So uh, the dress that my wife wore is, was yellow, quite kind of orangey yellow, very summery. Me, I wear boring clothes. I'm just going to put that in there. There's me, boring old me, standing in the background. Uh, let's make up a, a flesh tone, so white and pink. And then that can make me me there. I mean, arms, and he used to paint uh, for theatre as well, so backdrops, I suppose, and stained glass. I haven't seen a Chagall stained glass thing. I wonder was that uh, mostly in America that uh, he, he got that. Yeah. Let's describe some of the of the table there, like that. I'm using a bit of Prussian blue. Table leg there. Okay, my own painting. We just fill that in. The actual sort of uh, easel itself can be just described in dark lines. Just want to make sure that you haven't uh, given me any comments or, or anything yet. So I'm going to Put in a bit of shadow there. There. Uh, that was the coffee cup, wasn't it? We've got some uh, particular coffee cups <laughs> that, um, well, I mean, they're huge, aren't they? Sort of, because uh, we like our lots of coffee. Dark for the hair, and she's uh, dark haired. And hair for me, I don't have much hair, so that'll do there. But let's try for eyes there, like that. And let's put in some more descriptive items. I can put a, a kind of thing. See, that's my studio. He used a lot of blue. And there's a blue called Chagall Blue, apparently, but I couldn't figure out uh, or find out what it was actually. So uh, my cat's going to be blue anyway.
blue cat. Tail. Now, just to reprise, I suppose, my wife's dress is that my studio is actually ochre in colour, so I'm, I'm going to put that in as ochre. And then there's a door like that going down there. And or white door frame. Oh, that's nice and awkward. Hitting the side there like that. There. And there's a window. There's two windows, actually. There should be there. And that's it. I'm not referencing uh, anything. You see, this is the, the thing. I'm pretty damn sure that um, Chagall wasn't either. It was all coming out of his head. Um, let's put in some put the windows in there like that. Another window there. And some sky. We'll come back to that later. Thinly applied paint. Um, let me grab a, a another brush. Where is that? Oh, oh yes, in my hand. <laughs> right. Let me get some blue. I just add a bit of um, alizarin to it. I'm going to grab some viridian green, add some blue to it, a bit of yellow to it, a bit of white to it. But I don't want to depart too much from the, from the blues here. I don't paint like this at all. <laughs> I can change that later. That underneath the table could be a blue which is slightly more purpley. And some, based on viridian and yellow, and a bit of white. Let's put in some foliage. Then go over with some, put in some lighter flowers. You don't know what they are. You can't really tell from uh, these paintings anyway. That'll do for the top of the table and the book and Put in some different sort of colours there. Check back periodically. All right, Miles. Thank you very much for saying you're you're very kind. Um, I oh, just want to stop and 
turn off the notifications on my phone. Right, that is very bright. I'm going to see if, if I turn this off, what happens? Do we get... No, that's, that's still got a terrible hot spot on it. That's more... Well, is that better? Mm. It's mostly from here, isn't it? Hang on. Mm. I'm sorry about this. I just have to. I'm just have to adjust the lights. It's just. It doesn't really help, does it? Does that help? I'm having terrible difficulty with the lights tonight. Would that, would that be better? Such a hot spot coming off that here. Mm. Yeah. I apologize for that. That's not actually working very well. All right. Let's put in some um, different colors in in here. So across the sky, let's put in some okay. Now let's add in so that's mostly blocked in now, actually that's that's good. Add in some textures in blue along here and in here. It's the top of the wall. We have a wall between us and the the neighbors. And all different kinds of blue. So I'm going to add in some um, of the Prussian blue added to white down here. I'm going to shape that cat's head. I'll have to, have to come back into that and do more on it later. I need to put her sitting on something, don't I? Otherwise, she'll fall down. And more. Put that along there, put a line to delineate my studio. I need a bit more. The thing about um, Prussian blue, like Patello, it gets everywhere, it gets into your brush and uh, infects the, the, all of the, any other sort of uh, paint that you have. It's a hard one to actually deal with. Oh, we're back to the flowers then. Let's have a look. We'll get some uh, more white and yellow into that green. 
Let me get into one, two, three, three. Texture. get some warm red actually so some cadmium red mix it with some alizarin crimson to get a very rich deep red I can put some of those in as well Some more pinks, I think some more warmer pinks. We'll put those into the flowers as well because there are lots of flowers. Lots and lots of flowers. You did huge bouquets. And I need some, of course, some blue in there. little dabs it looks uh, to me like he did uh, some darker greens so let's get some pure viridian see what that looks like it's not too bad yeah okay and back into the back into the white so let's make a warm white so white yellow and uh, maybe a bit of orange in it make a nice, a nice warm Why don't we put that in there like that? And some people were saying that he painted a lot with um, uh, egg tempera, and that's something that I've never done. Egg tempera. So. Yeah. Okay. Let's go back into the background again, so I can shape that a little bit. Let's put in some shape on these, on the mugs there. That's and the book. There. Put some of that in there as well. Um, putting some pinks in that table as well. Uh, let's have a look at some purples for the purpley blues. Maybe to surround. Uh, surround the figure of my wife and me. Now I can sort of go back in and delineate a bit. I mean, to be honest, like uh, he did uh, delineate his characters, but uh, they're not—they're not finely delineated. going across that other hand. And now I'm going to have to have shoulders come. See, I get all sort of obsessed about sort of having the thing look right and uh, he, wasn't, he wasn't thinking that at all. Now I'm going to sort of oh, 
that's better. I like that. Uh, let's and across the top of her her legs. Move that up a little bit there. And move that strap in there like that. Go back to the pink for the face. Let's put that there. And it's actually a warmer pink I, I, I want. Looking a bit severe at the moment. Yeah. We'll come back to that because the good thing about this paint is it's um uh Griffin alkids, uh, most of it is anyway. Griffin alkids is a good sort of. It, it kind of sets quite quite well while you're painting. Just enough for you to uh, to be able to put paint over the next coat, if you see what I mean. Let me see. And there are a couple of features here. I'm going to steady my hand. Okay. And lighten up a bit of the sleeve. Darker bit in there for where the grass is. Just darken that up a little bit. My cat's a bit big. Does that matter? I'm not sure. I can reshape the cat anyway. I think this is the bloody hardest thing I've ever done. <laughs> it, despite it's deceptively simple. Yeah, let's put some shape on this fella. Um. Probably some Chagall enthusiasts now sort of tearing their hair out. Okay, that's supposed to have my palette in it. And that can be a brush. my E. 
easel. Um, let's go back to the flowers. I like bouncing around in, in paintings when I'm painting. So I'm going to put some little notes up in the flowers. Oh yes, that's what I must do, wasn't it? Sort of uh, put the. Describe them a little bit more. And the other thing is, this is A4 in size, so I suspect that Chappelle's paintings were an awful lot bigger, so things look a little bit sort of more refined when they're uh, when they're reduced. Now, my, my back wall, or the wall out the back I see, has a, has a trellis in it, so I'm going to put that in there, and then do a trellis there. Well, back to the flowers again, put in some spots there, some. Let's have a go at that cat. If I can remember how a cat looks. That's right, it goes there like that. That's for, I remember it now. <laughs> this cat, cat's got a club head. That's better. Maybe I'll be accused of doing the cat sort of um, too much like a cat. What's on the painting? In my original painting, the the two of us are sitting on the on the bench in the garden. So that'll do. The cat's there. And that that'll do for the painting. Now we need to get back to um, the face here. So what I'm going to do is come across there like that. And 
then I'll uh, put in the features using the blue again. Um, let me have a look. More white. at least give her some fingers there to make her a bit more human. Push the dress in there, get a bit of shape on that arm. I'm going to push the dress over a little bit to the left. Add a little bit of orange to the mix. Move out the hips a little bit. And go back to the, let me get my small brush. I'm going to put in the features using um, Prussian blue, I think. A bit of red for the lips. Uh, move those up a little bit. a little a dark under the nose there and under the mouth there Lizard and crimson in that mix for the mouth. Mm, give it some red fingernails there, and now the sculpt back with the bit of bit of shadow under there. Sculpt back with the flesh tone. Um, let me just make sure. Give me more of a now, I don't know how long Chagall took to, to make his paintings. But um, you could spend a long time on just on the on the face alone. Well, I think he did uh, spend much more time. Okay, I'm going to sculpt back with the hair now using the Prussian blue. My wife's hair goes like that. Comes down behind the neck. Might even sculpt that back a little bit and again and sculpt that shoulder down. Sculpt that one down.
come back to the face again. jawline a little bit different. I'm sculpt in the mouth a little bit more. That Prussian blue gets absolutely everywhere. something with the eyes as well. So first of all I'm going to grab some grey. And then grab some dark. some flesh mix for the neck again, push that out a little bit. I have to go back in with a, a stronger mix. And a little bit of uh, flush for the cheeks, a bit of red. Clean that brush down first before I get that awful Prussian blue into it. dark. She's got a wry smile, this figure. And then push that cheek out again. just sort of make that jawline more red than than blue and put a bit of color in her hair bib on, on her. <laughs> Our cat's called Fig. My girl's called her Fig. So. Figaro, in fact, for some reason. I don't know how they got that one. But uh, let's grab a bit more blue across the top there like that. 
Oh, yes, the um, palette. Put the palette there like that. Put a few blobs of paint. and outline the hand. And there's the brush. Put a ferrule on the brush so <laughs> that everyone knows where it is. Anything else I need to do? Just pop in some details. Well, I suppose I better sort of uh, fix those feet. There, that will do it. Oh, the one thing that I, I forgot about uh, my wife's outfit. Just bear with me for a second while I put in some lights there. Is that, it was polka dot. It was, um, had white polka dots on it. So I'll grab some white, put a bit of yellow and blue into it just to, to calm it down a little bit. I don't think she has it anymore. It was years and years ago. It was nice, I'll have to fix that. Oops. Then there. Then fix that part here. And go back with that blue here. Make that more sinuous, that line. Okay, to be honest lads, I don't think that I can uh, go any further with it because uh, I'm not Mark Chagall, quite evidently. I need to put on glasses, I, I'm, I've got glasses. In the days when I had longer hair and hair to be longer. Okay. Now, do tell me what you think. I'm going to have to, hang on, let me just show you this on that. I don't think I'm going to be able to make a, um, an edited video of this. It's just too bad, that lighting just too bad. I'm not sure why that went like that. thought I had the lighting sorted. There. Let me grab that across there like that and I'll turn it on to the other camera. Where am I? Teacher. All right, okay. Okay, so that's it there. 
I found that one of the most difficult things ever. How do I get this thing straight? There. So what I'll do is I'll, when it uh, when it sets, I'll scan it and um, send it just in the in the post to YouTube. But um, let me just. <coughs> So do say something. It'd be interesting to hear your 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 views, your thoughts on on the way it went. It's a very difficult thing to uh, to do something uh, you're not familiar with in a simple kind of way. It's kind of easier to go more accurately. Um, so tell me what you think. Give me some feedback. Good. I'm glad you enjoyed it, uh, uh, Miles. It's uh, uh, it was a tough one. Yeah, I'm not sure how many different styles that I can uh, emulate, but uh, I think that was one of the toughest that I've done. You're very good, uh, Project. Thank you very much for saying that. It's uh, um, there is an artist actually around uh, here in. Kilkenny actually she is in in southern Ireland and uh, she looking at this she's very much in a kind of a, a Chagall-esque style her name's Kathy Dineen D-I-N-E-E-N and she's very very good she used to do lots of illustrations for the uh, for the newspapers um, but she's a real true artist so I really like her <laughs> yeah no I, I get you I get you thinking about, this about Chagall is is, is Compositions were so awkward, and it must have been deliberate. Um, he's, uh, he's an enigma, really, and it's kind of uh, strange how he was sort of discovered, even, but because uh, he was kind of unexpected. You can see why Van Gogh uh, got uh, got the fame that he did. You know, I don't think it's true that he he didn't sell paintings in his lifetime. I, I think he may, maybe he did to his brother, um, but you can see why he had some success. You can certainly see why Monet had so much success. But I find it much harder to to um, see. I mean, what do you think of what um, uh, how Chagall sort of uh, managed it? He, he he must have had something anyway. Yeah. You know, so, I'm exhausted now, absolutely exhausted. I'm going to do something else next week. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, I think I'm, I might just finish this little run of, of emulation uh, going on. But uh, yeah, I don't think the video is good enough to, for me to make a um, to make an edited version of it. it. I'm going to have to sort out this lighting somewhere uh, along the line. Look, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, do sort of uh, leave a comment and uh, and say something. It kind of YouTube algorithm uh, needs uh, to know that people are watching it. So uh, it'd be great if you did and do spread the word. Uh, have a lovely weekend. What am I doing tomorrow? I'm going to be painting that thing behind me, wherever it is. I'm still on a, a kind of a cubist... Uh, um, Cube is run at the moment. Yeah, it was right the first time. So, yeah, um, and I'm actually producing a body of work, uh, you know, based on on cubism, but kind of brought up to date in the sense that uh, I'm sort of uh, marrying it with modern uh, computer techniques. I'm not using computer. I'm just referencing them in, in the paintings. So, because I think that's kind of uh, important. So, listen, have a a, a lovely. <laughs> the instantaneous creative flow of Chagall. Oh, God, I think Chagall's probably spinning in his grave uh, as we speak. But um, a very interesting uh, exercise, and thank you very much for suggesting it. Um, so I hope to see you next week. I'll have this lighting sorted out, and uh, and I'll I'll do something else. One day I want to actually sort of interview another artist. Would you like that? It would be an interesting uh, thing, I think. There's a couple of artists uh, I wouldn't mind talking to. For instance, Kathy Dineen, if she was agreeable. I think she's a good... Uh, uh, she's 
lots of knowledge about uh, painting. She's got a definite style, and she doesn't. Also, she she does, she also makes sort of um, physical things. So she made did the run of making these little shrines out of I don't know matchboxes and things like that. She's really good, very very creative uh, person. And uh, so we'll see who I can get to agree to come on and talk, and we can talk side by side. Uh, let me have a look at the last of these. Yeah, happy painting. I remember you were apprehensive about it. Yes, I was apprehensive, and uh, right up until I was actually doing it, I was actually being apprehensive while I was doing it as well. Yeah. Yes, I'm glad you think it's a good idea. Uh, yeah. So I'll, I'll try and sort of uh, get somebody. I, I have a friend in Nantes. In, in France, uh, it's a very good friend of mine, she's an Irish uh, artist, but she, she lives in, in France, and she's been there for, I don't know, 30 years or something, she's had her family there and everything, so uh, but she's a very interesting, lovely woman to talk to, very warm and friendly, and she's a really good artist too, and uh, her name is Siobhan uh, Gately, uh, Siobhan, if, if, unless, unless you're Irish, you probably won't know how to spell it, S-I-O-B-H, a N and then S I O B H A N Gately G A T E L Y. So I'm going to try and get her to come on. She she did say she would. Uh, 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 it's just actually setting up the means to do it, I suppose, is the thing. Because she's in France, I'm in Ireland. Okay, listen, have a lovely weekend. I know uh, the weekend starts on Thursday in Ireland, but uh, have a lovely weekend when it does finally catch up with you, and I'll see you next week. Okay. Best of luck to all of you and happy painting. Cheerio.